Ford has been one of my top performing investments since the start of 2020, growing well over 200% and hitting recent highs of around $20 per share. This is the highest it has been since 2001. And for those of you that are mathematically inclined, that's about 20 years ago. So if you're wondering why this is happening and why Ford is performing so well, you'll wanna stick around because in this video, I'll explain why the price is trending up, whether there's still upside at this point, and what you need to consider if you're looking at buying, holding, or selling. So stay tuned. Hey folks, Richard Walls here and welcome to my channel where I help you with career development and personal finance. So if either of those two topics are of interest to you, do make sure to subscribe down below and hit the notification bell so you get notified of when I post new videos. So with that said, let's get to it. Ford as a company has performed extraordinarily well over the last two years all things considered, and there's a lot of reasons for it. And the stock price, of course, has reflected a lot of the optimism in the market. So the question is, why is the stock price trending up? The longer term catalyst here really is based on their forward looking strategy, which includes a revamp of their vehicle lineup. And there are a number of elements to that strategy one is their recent divestment from low margin sedans. So they're not really gonna be focused, they're not selling sedans anymore. The only vehicle or only car that they're gonna be selling is the, the Mustang. So really what they're focusing on going forward are their trucks, SUVs, and their commercial vehicles. But they're also bringing back some legacy nameplates like the Ford Bronco, introducing new trucks to appeal to a new market with the Ford Maverick, which is a smaller truck. And last but not least, their big investments in electric vehicles. So they've spent a good amount of money. They're gonna continue spending billions of dollars electrifying their portfolio. And what this means is when you look back at where they started, the Mustang Mach-E, which is an all electric SUV. It's their first production all electric vehicle that they had and they've seen tremendous success from it. And the story gets better for their electric vehicles, which is they made the announcement that they're going to be launching an all electric Ford F-150. The Ford F-150 is the best selling truck in the world. And the fact that there's going to be an all electric variant of the F-150, that tells you all you need to know about their commitment to electrifying their portfolio. And I think what's giving a lot of shareholders confidence is that this entire strategy is being spearheaded by the appointment last year of their new CEO, Jim Farley. And just to give you a sense of the importance of that appointment, Jim Farley has been in the automobile industry his entire career. He, is actually, he actually came from Toyota at their peak, moving over to Ford, and then of course working his way up to now being CEO. But he's had an affinity for Ford since childhood. His grandfather actually worked under Henry Ford himself building Model Ts, which inspired Jim as a youth to buy Ford, to fix them up, and he then developed an interest in racing and performance vehicles. So Jim is not just some outside consultant from a different industry, but to have Jim, who's a true diehard fan of Ford and of vehicles in general, Ford now has someone at the helm of the company that can inspire confidence in their people, and then also for the rest of us, inspire confidence in shareholders. So all of that has really supported the price going from some of the lowest lows that they've had in many years since the Great Recession, uh, lowest lows last year, all the way up to where it is now. And some of the more recent catalysts would include their Q3 earnings, which were really strong. They overperformed versus analysts forecasts. Second is the reinstatement of their dividend. They used to offer it. They had offered it for a very long time. They cut that during last year's events. And since they've experienced growth and a return to profitability, and they still expect that to happen going forward, they're reinstating the dividend. That's essentially a signal of confidence that they'll continue to perform. And that's obviously a good signal for investors. Third is EV sales for the month of October have tripled 
which is a positive signal again, as that's where the market is heading and it's justifying the investments they've been making in EVs. Fourth is Rivian. This is a company you might have heard of and it's made a lot of headlines very recently. It's an all electric vehicle company or an EV company and it's a relatively new company and they just launched their first production electric truck recently. And they've just gone public with a market cap that is, as of this writing, higher than General Motors. This is important because Rivian is actually backed by Ford among a few other large companies like Amazon, but Ford has over a 5% stake in the company worth billions of dollars now with the IPO having gone through. So the IPO could serve as a really nice boost. So knowing that, is there still upside at this point? Well, there's a few notes to consider. One is Ford hasn't really been in this share price territory in 20 years. And the all time high for this stock was around $35 a share, which was in the late 90s. Now, past performance does not necessarily suggest future performance as we all know, but I would say I would look at that $35 mark as being the ceiling. If that's something that they can break past, then that's going into, again, new territory. But even going from $20 a share to $35, that's nearly doubling. That's still gonna be a pretty significant jump. Now, it gives me confidence that that's a possibility that they can get to those previous highs is that we're at an inflection point in the auto industry. And that inflection point is the transition from internal combustion engines to all electric vehicles. And the majority of major automakers in the world have taken note of this and many of them are making their own investments. And Ford, to their credit, they were one of the first or one of the bigger automakers to take note of this and start seriously investing in this market. Now you might say Toyota has done this to some degree. You might say Chevy has done this. I would say they've done it more from the perspective of let's just have some electric vehicle in the market. Let's not give it too much focus. Ford took it a step further. What they're saying is with the launch of the Mustang Mach-E, they're putting a legendary nameplate, a nameplate that has a lot of value. There's a lot of history there. They're making that the nameplate for their all electric, their first all electric vehicle. And they're making it attractive. They're making it an appealing car to drive. There's a lot of technology built in. There's a lot of design considerations built in. It's not just some novelty. And then of course, they're going to be doing that in the future with the all electric F-150. So they're really committed to this. So it is a bit of a race between all the major automakers to advance their portfolio in this way to electrify their entire lineup and Ford happens to be ahead of the game here. And the ultimate goal here is to be able to sell millions of electric vehicles at a good affordable price point for the average consumer, and also importantly, to do so profitably. So what do you need to consider if you're thinking of buying, holding, or selling? Well, like I mentioned a moment ago, I believe that the $35 per share price point is a ceiling that one could look forward to, and it really depends on a number of factors going in their favor, which is gonna be hinged on the success of their electric vehicle sales, which we're already seeing some early signs of that with the Mustang Mach-E, but also the success that they have in making that shift in their portfolio from moving away from sedans to selling just, well, the Mustang, which is a uh, two-door, but also their SUVs, their trucks, and their commercial vehicles. If they can make that pivot successfully and still be profitable and still grow, then that's gonna be a really good sign. They're not gonna spend as much, you know, they're not gonna spend what they had spent before on trying to continue developing sedans, which is a market I would say is owned by Honda, Toyota, I'm sure there's another automaker that I'm missing there. But those are really dominant players that for Ford, it's just not, it's just not viable. But some of the risks of getting from $20 a share to $35 or beyond is there are a few, few risks. One is that Ford is not the only major automaker making these kinds of really massive investments in EVs other major automakers are making them as well. You have GM, you have Volkswagen, you have Audi, which already has one, you have Porsche, you have a number of companies doing this. But as far as mass market vehicles, 
you again there's going to be competition here secondly is ford is also going to have competition from non-legacy automakers tesla being the most notable one but then you have a company like rivian who just produced their first production electric truck ford is backing them i don't know for how long that will be the case as soon as of course they have their f-150 going into production. Then you have NIO, which is a Chinese-based automaker who has been extraordinarily successful. They are all often credited, and I've got videos on this as well, but they're seen as the Tesla of China. They've been very successful in that market, and of course they look to expand. But the other elements that are at play here for Ford and really for other automakers as well is the electric charging infrastructure that needs to be developed and also the battery technology. There's a lot of R&D investments that need to be made by Ford. And in some cases, I can see Ford using a third party, like maybe in the case of battery technology. It could be the case that other companies are doing this really well and Ford is simply one of many automakers that are licensing that technology or buying that technology from another company. So really that may be dependent on third parties, in which case if every automaker is using these same suppliers with some of those technologies, what's going to differentiate Ford from the other automakers? So those are the risks to consider if you're thinking of buying, holding, or selling. And as I usually mention, I'm not a financial advisor. Do your own due diligence and invest at your own risk. But I do hope you found this information useful. And if you did, do make sure to hit the like button at the bottom of this video. It helps out my channel quite a bit. And also if you agree or disagree with my assessment of Ford as a stock, do let me know in the comments down below what you think of this opportunity. I'd love to start the conversation. So with that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around.